Since 2006, about 60,000 Africans have arrived in Israel on harrowing treks through the Sinai Desert, fleeing poverty, persecution, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. As refugee camps across Africa fill up and Europe closes its gates to asylum seekers, Israel became the next best option, accessible by land and said to be a developed democracy. But instead of providing them with safe haven, Israel is both refusing to grant them any benefits and denying them the ability to work legally to support themselves. Faced with poverty and exploitation, a new nightmare unfolded. While protests raged in the streets against the presence of asylum seekers from Africa, the man who held the power to determine their fate, Deputy Prime Minister Eli Yishai, demanded their expulsion. And the few isolated Israelis who dared to protest, like this woman, were met with a harsh backlash. <laughs> At the anti-African rallies we documented, one figure was ubiquitous, a member of Knesset named Michael ben Ari. In August 2010, we interviewed him at his Knesset office. יש להם שם בית. מה זה גירוש? איזה גירוש? הם שווים הביתה. כל מדינה בעולם מתוקנת הייתה עושה את זה. נהפוך להיות מדינת הגירה, אבל יש כאלה שעוינים את המדינה. ולכן הם רוצים להפוך אותה למדינת אזרחי כל העולם. נביא לפה מיליון אפריקאים, חצי מיליון פיליפינים, שניים שלושה מיליון סינים, ושלום על ישראל. למה זה מאיים שיהיו פה מיליון אפריקאים? זה מאיים כי לא תהיה פה מדינה יהודית. המדינה שלנו, המדינה שלנו, המדינה שלנו, תקשיב, המדינה שלנו שונה ממדינות אחרות. המדינה שלנו היא מדינה יהודית, מדינה יהודית ודמוקרטית. זה איזון מאוד מאוד לא פשוט, זה יכול להיות תחתי סאטרה במקומות מסוימים. זאת אומרת, דברים סותרים זה את זה במקומות מסוימים. במידה ותביא לפה מיליון אפריקה, היא תחדל מלהיות יהודית. היא תחדל מלהיות יהודית. אנחנו נלחמים. לדוגמה, בתופעה של התבוללות בעולם, ישנה התבוללות של 70-80 אחוזים במקומות מסוימים בעולם. זאת אומרת, עם ישראל הולך לאיבוד. לי עם ישראל יקר. בן ארי is known for leading nationalist marches through Arab neighborhoods inside Israel, where he antagonizes, intimidates, and menaces Arab citizens. On the holiday of Chanukah, בן ארי led a rally at Levinsky Park, a public space in South Tel Aviv that has become home to many Africans who were denied work permits and the ability to afford housing. <laughs> Earlier in the year, at an anti-African rally in Tel Aviv that was attended by thousands, Ben Ari was joined by lawmakers from the governing Likud party and other mainstream politicians. <laughs> Many 
minutes after the rally, a thousand Israelis rioted, attacking African homes and businesses and assaulting any African they found in the street. Here is footage shot by one of the participants in the riot, a supporter of Mikhail ben -Ari. Days later, Yulia Shmuelov Belkovich, at the time a legislator from the centrist opposition party, Kadima, called for Israelis who advocate for the Africans to be locked in prison camps alongside the asylum seekers. According to the Israeli Coalition Against Racism, incidents of racist incitement by Israeli public figures doubled in 2012. In many cases, the targets of their hateful invective were not Palestinians, but African migrants. Chief among those targeting the presence of Africans in Israel is a core of hundreds of state-appointed rabbis, including some of the premier religious authorities in Israel, who issued a letter forbidding Jews from renting apartments to the African asylum seekers and any other non-Jews. Here is a rabbi that we filmed, one of many who labored to promote the religious edict. Though painted as an existential threat, the fact remains that Africans in Israel pose no known security threat to the country. None of them have engaged in acts of terrorism against Israel, and very few, if any, hold anti-Israel opinions. Most are eager to contribute to the prosperity and well-being of the country. So why are they being demonized, and why is the government so determined to deport them? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu previously warned that if the level of Arab citizens of Israel exceeds 30% of the general population, Israel could become a binational state and would lose its Jewish character. With tens of thousands of non-Jewish African migrants living in Israel by 2010, Prime Minister Netanyahu warned that their presence increases the looming threat to the Jewish character of the state. שאנחנו משיגים את התוצאה הזאת. בחודש הקרוב אנחנו נשלים את בניית הגדר לאורך גבול סיני, ועכשיו אנחנו עוברים לשלב השני, וזה השלב של החזרת המסתננים שכבר נמצאים כאן. Already, the Israeli Knesset has amended the Anti-Infiltration Act it passed in 1954 to prevent Palestinian refugees from returning to their property. Under the new version of the law, Non-Jewish migrants can be arrested on site and held in prison without trial for three years or more before being deported. To hold the migrants and asylum seekers before deporting them, Israel's government has built what it calls an accommodation center in the Negev Desert. Blueprints of the center reveal that it will be in fact the largest prison of its kind in any industrialized nation. Currently, about 2,000 Africans languish in the detention center in what human rights groups describe as substandard conditions. This footage we shot outside the prison shows how vast it is. A comprehensive look at the interior of the prison camp has never been presented to the general public. Until the Israeli government is able to resolve the crisis, the chaos in the streets continues. This past New Year's Eve, we followed a mob of ultra-nationalists as they marched through South Tel Aviv demanding the expulsion of non-Jewish Africans. After the march, the ultra-nationalists gathered at the headquarters of Mikhail Ben Ari's Strong Israel Party, and that's when we were recognized as left-wing journalists. <laughs> Je me sens dans ma tête,